for someone that's able to get what three to four million dollars a year in salary and a good million plus in bonuses every year, part of that salary for a company that he was a part of that was $20 billion in debt. Now $5.75 billion in debt stock price dropping, even when they brought the IPO back and put iHeartMedia on the stock exchange. And this guy thinks he's going to make all the changes necessary to make things better for iHeartMedia and for radio in general by going to podcasting and saying all of a sudden he's the guy that is running podcasting. He is the savior, the pioneer of podcasting. He didn't say it like that, but basically this is the same kind of a gist. Same person that said podcasting is radio's birthright. He spoke at the podcast movement conference, Evolutions, I believe it was called. And yeah, he was at Evolutions this past Thursday night in Los Angeles. And so some of the things he says, really, for a guy that wants to go and be the voice of podcasting, the face of podcasting, I would not want him out there. And I don't understand why podcast movement and other conferences out there. Look, and I got to say this, first of all, I know I'm not big about saying anything about conferences in the first place for podcasters. Not like I have a problem with it. I mean, look, King of Podcasts, look right there on the name. I have the website. I got the pedigree to talk about this. And when I look at what's going on here and I see radio doing what it always does, corporate radio continuing to be vultures upon itself, corrupt as hell, hurting live and local broadcasting minute by minute. And then for whatever reason, iHeartMedia, well, they can't make anything off their own programming. No, we're going to buy podcasts and we're going to make other podcasts because we're not going to go and repurpose our own radio programming like we thought we could do the first point. The same people that probably laughed at podcasting a decade ago and look at Bob Pittman now trying to be the voice of podcasting. Let's look at what he talks about. He says podcasting's future is wide open. What do you mean future is wide open? Future wide open for you to go ahead and belittle it and pillage it and, you know, be like a savage wildebeest and ravage this industry and ruin it like you did corporate radio. Is that what we want? Well, let's go and talk about what the story he brings up here through Forbes. Now, as we know, okay, Forbes puts a nice little, nice little bow on the career that Bob Pittman had prior to radio. Okay. Ran cable, he ran MTV, AOL, right? He did do radio 50 years later, CEO of iHeartMedia, still the biggest radio station group, 850 stations. Oh, this is also great time to have him on after he just laid off another 1,200 employees. Wonderful. Good timing. And of course, nobody's going to talk to him about that. No, we're going to go on with podcasting. Anyway, let's go into what he says. He said at the Evolutions Conference in Los Angeles, I think the sky is the limit for podcasting. As an industry, we need to keep investing in it so it can reach its full potential. No, 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 no. It's reaching its full potential now. If you're talking about making money, that's another thing if you want to have a corporate entity like yourselves coming into this space and trying to monetize it because you cannot monetize your other revenue streams. You want to separate digital from analog. You don't want to bundle. And then you want to go ahead and come into podcasting and create another revenue stream of which you cannot make the kind of money that you need to make through your rep firm to make the money that's going to make back for advertisers or anybody else. But you're going to another pipeline because you failed at the other two. Streaming radio and live radio. We already know that for a fact. Now, he says, despite his own bullish take on podcasting, he acknowledged that it's hard to tell what's going to be big. My job as CEO is to figure out where we're going to make our big bets. Our strategy is to be where our listeners are with products and experiences they expect from us. No. (laughs) What you need to do is do what Joe Rogan's doing. Joe Rogan is the most successful podcaster there is. Follow his model. Follow the NPR model. Less commercials, no commercials. You find ways to go and promote it other ways. That's what you do. But trying to go ahead and try to recreate an ad model. Once again, that's why Spotify. You, I mean, if you want to do something, subscription model, if that's what you want to do. But then again, you couldn't possibly create anything worthy of a premium content model. Even iHeartRadio, I don't have an interest of in buying that. Spotify, Pandora, 
Apple or iTunes, yes. Amazon Prime, absolutely, but not this. Now, what has iHeartRadio done? Like I said, they took their radio shows. Oh, we're going to make a podcast. We're going to take the morning show, take the traffic and weather out of there. We're just going to put it up there. No, you can't do that. It doesn't work that way. Then, oh, we're going to make our hosts record new shows, extra hours of content, podcast only. Well, that didn't work either. So now they're buying other networks. When other networks are being bought, I mean, Gimlet just got bought by Spotify and Pandora's bought, and, you know, that's what's going on. Late 2018, iHeart, and how does iHeart Media have the money to buy Stuff Media for $55 million? And they also installed a CEO of their own, rechristened it iHeart Podcast Network. This just sounds dirty, filthy, sleazy, bad deal. Does anybody think that Stuff Media is going to work? Why, how Stuff works? That's all the content that's there. And remember, this is the same company that last year, last, what was it, April? They also wanted to create a radio station in Western Pennsylvania that is a podcast format where all the podcasts are run in a talk format with commercials. This is the genius of iHeartMedia and people like Bob Pittman. Now, the CEO, uh, which is uh, Conal Byrne, Conal, Conal, joined on stage at the conference. And as we know, Spotify bought The Ringer, which is Bill Simmons' podcast driven media company, Bill Simmons from ESPN fame. And uh, Sport, what was it? Uh, I forget the name of the something land. I can't think of it right now. It, it escapes me. So now, what has also been said is Daniel Eck, who was CEO for The Ringer, okay, he says that, quote, the trend that we're investing is in that radio is moving online. This is the dumbest thing I've heard. Radio is moving online. It's been online for over a decade. Where have you been? Streaming radio has been on since the two, since early 2000s. Even before that, I heard streaming radio. What are you talking about? Is moving online. No, it's just another revenue stream. Be honest, okay? You're failing with your original model. Podcasting and radio are different entities, okay? Streaming audio, right? On-demand audio, different story. And then, day before the conference, iHeart announces, of course, they're going to use this for some publicity and promotion. That's why they did Bob Pittman at this event, to promote. So they're going to expand their Spanish-language podcast offerings, New shows developed by Enrique Santos, chairman and chief creative officer of iHeart Latino, who this guy without his co-host on El Vacilón de la Mañana, which used to be on El Sol in Miami and was a very popular morning show, very controversial, shock jock stuff. And he's now got a watered down show and he's gotten become a nice big corporate suit because, you know, Enrique Santos checks all the boxes. He's Hispanic. He's gay. Nothing wrong with that, but that's the reason he's getting a lot of what he's getting. But his creativity and really what made him a popular morning show host on FM radio in Spanish was he had a good co-host with him that really made the show well, and they broke rules and really stretched the boundaries. And they had good programming, but right now they don't so much. Now, moving along, Pittman said that 92 I love how they put this out here, Nielsen's and their fake ratings. 92% of Americans at least listen to broadcast radio at least once a week. Do you understand what that means? That means they probably turn on the radio while they're switching to their Bluetooth. <laughs> okay, that's what they're probably doing. Not this idea that they're talking about here. It's just stupid. Anyways, add-in streaming services, audiobook services, and podcasts. Nearly everyone has listened to audio in one form or another. Okay, but he's turning the numbers around. I'm sure, yeah, Go. you can use your personal people meter ratings and make some kind of an idea, and I'm sure it's not what you think it is. And the market, this, the stuff he says is such genius. Bob Pittman, you are a sage. You are such a wise man. Show me how you're going to go and lose another $20 million, okay? Show me here. The market for podcasts is for, quote, anyone with ears. The consumer has really run out of time with their eyes. Audio is the beneficiary, beneficiary of all this. What remarkable words you just said. Come on. This guy is, I'm telling you, this is fluff. Happy talk. He's not saying anything that's really all special. And, you know, he talks about how podcasts can also benefit established stars. Well, 
let's talk about stars that are really not doing much lately. Will Ferrell, eh, he's got a, you know, sometimes he has a movie here and there, uh, you know, doing the, uh, yeah, Will Ferrell, he's doing, uh, what is it, Ron Burgundy. That show, he gets to do that voice. It's You're basically just milking off of a movie that was very well a good franchise that did well for two movies, and that's it. I mean, the Anchorman thing can only go so far, and, you know, that gimmick can only go so far as well. But, you know, I digress. He says, I think it's a great time, a great place to test out ideas and get them out there. I know this, Bob Pittman says, whatever we think sitting here today, that podcast will be, it will be well beyond that. The human mind has a hard time conceiving things that are different. What? Podcasting? It's just radio removed from the airwaves and not done live. That's it. It's pre-recorded radio. Anybody that does podcasting in the first place should realize anybody that's done radio before and translates over, it's not hard for them to do. Pretty easy, as a matter of fact. But whatever Bob Pittman thinks, he's whatever, out of his gourd. Doesn't make sense why he wants to go and put that together. But this is what he thinks. He thinks that, uh, you know, He's creating some common ground. Like he's getting a big ice pick. He's cracking down a glacier of unknown territory. He's breaking ground. No, he's not. Now, let's go in, into the other part. Bob Pittman also said, and this is from the RadioInc.com uh, column. They also reported on us, and they said that he encouraged podcasters to think big. Yeah, think big and lose money. What's the limit? He says sky's the limit. He was clear how much he believed in podcasting and told the crowd it's going to be a lot bigger than anyone thinks. Well, you know what? If this guy's going to be leading the way to podcasting, I would be, I'm able to go and sell you the Brooklyn Bridge right now at a great price. This guy should not be allowed to be speaking on behalf of bod- podcasters. Let me say that one more time. You can go and look back. I'm going to put a link to his podcasting, his radio's birth, my, my, my comments on that before. I'm going to bring that up again. You could look for that on the description below, but I'm telling you, or look for it in the description if you're listening to it on audio. This is the whole thing. Now, he is podcasting his own. He's done 36 episodes since last May. Math and Magic Stories from the Frontiers of Marketing. He says, I learned a lot about how to do it and what the challenges are. What I like about podcasting is you can tell the same story many different ways. I get into these stories, but I tell them differently. That's the beauty of podcasting. It has a rigid to the stories, the morphing stories. This is the same shit you could be doing on radio. The reason you don't do it is because you don't want to spend the money on good talent, which could come from anywhere from the market that you're in, Bring them in there, get them in front of a microphone, and let them perform and pay them an honest man's wage or honest woman's wage. And you could do that and do the same thing with radio and monetize. Why do you want to go ahead and not use the radio model, which some people will still adopt and listen to? People are already conformed to listen to commercials in the first place. Take the commercials out. Take some of them out. Reduce the inventory. Come on. Why haven't you done that yet? And then you create this creative programming, which can be done anytime you want and let it be done for an audience that actually matters. And it can be done in real time and live. But Bob Pittman doesn't understand that, or he doesn't want to say he understands that. He's just not allowed to do it. Whatever it is, it's bullshit. That's all there is to it. Now, Colonel Byrne, he asked Pittman why he believes podcasting is a goal man. He says, quote, Sitting here today, whatever we think podcast is going to be, we are missing it. It's going to be much bigger. As we think about it, our company, it's AM. Why does he read AM first? AM, FM, digital, and podcasting. Okay. Streaming, not digital. That doesn't even make sense. So it's a platform as big as our other platforms. Okay, so he understands podcasting is basically taking their money, taking the lunch money away, and running with it. Because people are making money off of podcasting, not in the way that Bob Pittman thinks, but people are making money off of podcasting in different ways. You know, he goes along and says, by the way, audio overall is going through a renaissance. No, it's going through a digital disruption, just like movies, just like TV, just like music. Okay. 
I think for 10, 15 years, people forgot how big audio is. No, no. Audio has always been big. It's just the way people are listening to it. When people know they can go and listen to it through their phones, through data, and not have to listen through crackly, you know, not arable sometimes or not really well-sounding airwaves on an FM AM stereo, then, yeah, they're going to do that. And if they're just going to hear, you know, a station that's going to have voice tracking or no voice tracking at all and just a jukebox with commercials, then people are going to opt to their Bluetooth setting, which they can find in any car and any dashboard now. Most major cars have it. That's pretty obvious. And they can listen to whatever they want. So in an era where everybody is on their phones, disconnected from other people, having a friend, having a companion is more important than ever. They're probably going to get it from the person on the radio and the person on the podcast. We're doing both the same thing. I think the sky's the limit. This is idiocy, much like the movie Mike Judge made. Bob Pittman's out of it, man. <clears throat> I mean, he, and I think there's just some people that are in podcasting that might not realize that this guy's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Will people please look back at the history of this man and what he has done as the face, as the CEO of iHeartMedia, formerly Clear Channel, and the bad reputation this company has? You do not want this wolf coming into this business. By all means, giving him a platform, podcast movement, why did you give him a platform? And by the way, my comments do not in any way represent webmasterradio.fm, cannabisradio.com, or any platforms that I work with. And by the way, I am not going to speak any ill will of any podcast conference. That's not what I'm here for. Just because I don't attend them and I don't speak of them doesn't mean anything. Okay? Podfest, Podcast Moon, hey, God bless you. Make your money. You offer a great forum for people. But you know what? You don't need to be giving Bob Pittman a keynote address. I hope you didn't pay this man to come over here and do this and give this swill out there. The podcast community does not need someone like him around. You want, you want iHeartMedia to be a part of this? You know what? Why isn't somebody else doing this? Why is it Bob Pittman is speaking for podcasters? That is a royal mistake. 